Hi everyone, welcome back to this next part of Substrate Recipes. And in this part, we're gonna expose our running node to a front end so that we can actually do something with our node and adjust our blockchain. Because currently, you know, if we just have it running in our um, command line, you know, it's not so easy to do anything with it. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hook it up here to the uh, polkadot.js.org apps. Now to get here, you're going to need um, to search this on Google or you can use a direct link, but it's polkadot.js.org backslash apps. Now to get this started, the first thing we're going to need to do is actually, of course, start our node running. And you can do this in the command line or however you want to do it. And let's see here. So I'm doing this in my command line, which is cargo run dash dash bin space kitchen dash node dash dash. So we're going to pass arguments to the kitchen node itself. So dash dash dev dash dash temp. So watch the video before this if you're not really sure what's going on, because I explain it in a lot more detail. So let's hit enter and let this start running. Okay, looks good. So once we've hit the idle phase, we know that it, it, it is running. So what I need to do is go back to my browser. And once we're here in this uh, Polkadot wallet here, we can just click here and it's gonna show a dropdown of different um, chains or parachains and test networks and stuff like that that you can connect to and check out. But if we go down to development, we can choose local node, which is our, it should be your uh, IP address here for your home network. And it should do it automatically. And don't forget to click switch up here. Now what it's going to look is for an active node running on our computer. And mine started up right away. Now this is probably not going to happen for yours because it's going to be missing a little bit of information. So you're going to get an error up here and you're going to see, um, well let's see if we can actually get it doing that. What you want to do is go to settings and we're going to go to developer and you're gonna find this right here. And see if we can save it like this. And what you're gonna see is an error like this, something like fatal, unable to initialize the API, blah, blah. So when I first came to this, I thought, okay, you know what I mean? This um, substrate recipe should run out of the box here with the front end, you know, what's going on? Maybe something's wrong with it, maybe I broke it. But no, we just need to add some extra settings here. So thank you to Alejandro from Parity for setting me straight about getting this going. So what you're going to need to do is go to settings, go to developer, and we're going to have to basically add a JSON file right here. And what this is going to do is expose various types to this front end so we can use the front end to adjust things. And if we don't expose these types here, then the front end doesn't know what to look for. It doesn't know what it should be doing. So it's going to have some problems because every, you know, runtime, every um, blockchain or whatever made through Substrate is going to be a little bit different. So we need to add those unique items in. So let me just fight here. Okay, so I've got IntelliJ open. You can have Visual Studio Code open or whatever IDE you are using. And what we want to do is go into the recipes we're gonna go into runtimes and we've got various runtimes here. Now the kitchen node, if we go to nodes, kitchen node, because we know this is the one we wanna work with, let's check out the cargo.toml file, which is sort of the manifest file for you know, this um, node. And I believe it should say, I know it should say somewhere, the uh, which runtime it's using, You know, if you didn't know. Okay, so down here it says runtime, package, super runtime, and then it gives you a local path. So we know that's the runtime that's being used. So we can go over to this runtime. And we're going to see a types.json file here. And right here we have all of the types that need to be exposed. And it's going to have, um, you know, everything we need. So don't worry about this too much for now, like trying to understand this until you go through more of the recipes and understand what's going on. But at the beginning, all you need to know is that you need to copy this and that you need to paste this into right here. And so make sure it's you have the opening and closing, um, what are these, parentheses? 
curly brackets here and save this. And what this is gonna help you do is hopefully, after that's saved, we're gonna refresh this. And now it looks all nice and happy. It's not giving us any more air, so we can check out the accounts. So this is maybe the first time you're using this front end to access your um, blockchain, and that's cool. So, you know, I, I would definitely take some time and like check out all of these different things and look at them, although you'll be using them as you go along with the uh, substrate recipes. But here it has a bunch of built-in accounts. We've got Al, you know, Alice and Alice's stash, Bob, Bob stash, Charlie, Dave, and so on and so forth. And you can see their balances here. So some of them have lots of money and some don't. And we can just go send and we're sending from Alice's account. We can choose who we want to send to. So I'm going to send to poor Freddy here. He's got no money. And I'm going to give him a nice reasonable number with lots of zeros and just go ahead and make this transfer. Submit and sign. And now if we check Freddy's balance here, we can see Freddy's got some money and Alice has like, you know, potentially slightly less money. And why don't we check here, go back to our terminal and see here. So this is our node running and we can see the node here that we're preparing block for prop proposing at one and then it's got a hash for the block and um, then it seals the block right here so this is, means it's done. So otherwise this is just going to sit idle until there's some sort of a transaction that happens and once that transaction happens then it's going to create a block and then eventually seal it after a certain amount of time. And I believe we can also just see this here on the network. If we maybe go to the network explorer, you can see the recent blocks and when the last block was created and um, you know the information of the recent events. We can also check out various block details, various node details. So you can see there's no connected peers. And uh, you know, the refresh, we can check out the chain state. So for example, if we wanted to say, uh, you know, we're just gonna check out the raw data directly from the uh, storage. We wanna see, say, Freddy. And to actually see Freddy, we're gonna hit this little plus button here and it's gonna show us Freddy's account information or whatever else. So we could also just um, not include any options and push plus. Okay, so that's not the right way. Let's see here. Total insurances balance. Anyway, so you can go ahead and play with all these. I didn't find what I'm looking for, but um, let's check systems, hit plus. Okay, so here's um, you know Freddie's account in the system. So this is saved on on the block, and uh, you know has his data, how much free money he has here, and so on and so forth. Um, if you disable the options, then it's just going to give you all of them rather than filtered by account ID. So you can see here. Here is all of the data. And if you're new to this, you know, uh, probably you are if you're following through these recipes, that's completely fine. You're going to come back to this later and use it more. And at that point, you will, you will come back and you're sort of like relearn this and think, OK, yeah, no, now that's what that does. So you can also see constants of the system. So we can, we can close these down. And this means these are things on the blockchain that do not change. These are um, consistent for the chain forever so we could see the block weights and it gives us you know various information about block weights um, or you know block length or you know all kinds of things like we could see the runtime version and this kind of information so again this is this is fixed and we could access it using the through the raw storage by using some commands but I wouldn't worry about that for now so just take some time to browse through the storage and browse through the constants and we can do other things like um, we can have you know extrinsics. We'll talk about this later. But making calls from outside, sign and verify, sudo. We can inject JavaScript and stuff like that. So again, this is all test data. So don't worry about screwing anything up. Go ahead and play, push buttons, see what happens, and uh, you know break it. It's okay. 
So that's it for this part. This is how you can get this started just by using the polkadot.js.org backslash apps online to connect to your blockchain. And this will be, uh, you know, quite a bit of help as you go through these uh, substrate recipes. Okay, until next time.